Our ability to move military equipment and supplies through our waterways to ocean-going transport ships ensures that men and women in uniform serving around the world have what they need to complete their missions. The inland waterway system also promotes environmental quality. In addition to providing the transportation network for commerce and recreation, the rivers provide habitats for fish and wildlife. The Corps is entrusted to provide multi-purpose integrated solutions to balance the nation's needs for navigation, flood control, hydroelectric power, and water supply, as well as our needs for fish and wildlife and recreation. We believe that you can re reduce noxious gases that occur on surface transportation modes. We believe that we can reduce surface transportation runoff that occurs on the highways and the roadways. We believe that to be true because of the fact that if you ship by water, you're able to ship larger quantities, more cargo at a uh, reduced cost and also save on fossil fuels. The Corps, as authorized by Congress, works closely with other government and non-government organizations to study ways to maintain and improve our systems, taking into consideration all the concerns and complex issues surrounding water resources. Locks and dams provide the essential infrastructure that allows tows to move through the system. They also contribute to water supply and recreational opportunities and produce clean, efficient electricity through hydropower in some locations. Locks are generally 110 feet in width and come in three basic lengths, less than 600 feet, many of these built in the 1930s or earlier, 600 to 1,000 feet, most built between 1950 and 1980, and 1,200 feet. New construction or shorter locks lengthen since 1960. The newer 1,200-foot locks allow a typical tow of 15 barges to pass in a single lockage. Shorter locks require that the tow be divided into two sections, then reassembled at the other end. The Corps, as authorized by Congress, works closely with other government and non-government organizations to study ways to maintain and improve our systems, taking into consideration all of the concerns and complex issues surrounding water resources. We continue to complete regular maintenance on the system, attempting to detect problems before they cause major damage and to complete repairs with as little impact as possible to the users of the system. But half of the locks and dams in our nation have already outlived their 50-year economic life and require continuous maintenance and emergency repairs. The result is lock closures that can bring traffic on the water superhighway to a crawl or even to a complete standstill, just like on any roadway at rush hour when it's closed for upkeep. In the fall of 2003, Greenup Lock and Dam, located on the Ohio River, about 120 miles upriver from Cincinnati, was closed for eight weeks when inspections showed unanticipated structural deterioration and a clear risk of gate failure. This is just one example of the maintenance challenges we face. Difficult decisions are made every day concerning maintenance of the system, including what must be repaired or replaced now and what can wait until later when funds are available. On the uh, lower gate, this gate right behind me here, um, we've seen a, quite a bit of cracking in recent years, and the frequency of the cracking is, is getting worse. In our last inspection, we counted about 260 cracks. If you had a catastrophic failure of the gate, you'd probably have about a one-year outage. During that time, there couldn't be any uh, river traffic past Lower Monumental. The uh, um, lock system in the Snake River would be essentially shut down completely. We are at the lower end of the McAlpin Lock and Locks and Dam in Louisville. We have had a, an emergency dewatering on the 1200 foot chamber uh, to make repairs to cracks that were discovered and some dive inspections earlier in the spring. McAlpin Lock, which is out here in the harbor across from our office, is currently closed for an emergency repair. The closure is for two weeks. That means that towboats and barges are stacking up on either side of the lock, waiting for the lock to reopen. Today, there are probably 120 tows, each of those a towboat with up to 15 barges, sitting parked, waiting for the river to reopen. 
at a cost of $350 per hour for each tow. This simple two-week lock closure for repairs is going to cost the industry $14 million. The closure of McAlpin is significant. It's, it's like comparing it to the United States and the interstate system. If we were to close every interstate right down the middle of the country and you had all the trucks on the east side of the country had to stay on the east side and all the trucks on the west side of the country stayed on the west side, you could see that you would have a big problem. The McAlpin closure has had a very serious impact on the upriver industries. Many of them manage their inventory on a just-in-time basis, and what that means is they can't store their products. If they can't receive their products, then there's no work available for their employees. Continuing an aggressive maintenance and repair program on the inland waterway system is critical to the system's ability to support our nation's transportation future. If the repairs don't get done, we fear a catastrophic failure on the system. We risk the potential of shutting down the river system. Rail and highway are far more expensive than moving by barge, so it's extremely important that this system be maintained so that we can maintain our competitive position in the world marketplace. I'd say the average person has uh, no earthly ideas to the importance of inland water transportation or the part it plays in their everyday life. If we are to safeguard this critical, nearly invisible transportation network, we must adequately and aggressively maintain the inland waterway system. That means working together with our partners in state and local government, the industry and private citizens to plan, manage and maintain the system in an efficient, environmentally responsible way. We invite you to be a part of our team, seeking solutions for our nation's water resource challenges. Visit our website and contact your local U.S. Army Corps of Engineers office to learn more about water resources in your area and in the rest of the nation. The Inland Waterway System can continue to be an important, nearly invisible transportation network, supporting our nation's security economic prosperity, and our environment, now and in the future.